Welcome to Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron. This one, folks, is going to hurt for a long time. Looked like the Packers were headed to the Super Bowl. Instead, it slips right through their hands. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron. I am Brian Groff, as always, alongside former Packers and Badgers offensive lineman Bill Ferrario. How you doing, Brian? This is one week. I am not too excited to be here. We have uh, a lot of not-so-good things to talk about. It was a rough, rough game to watch. It was exciting for the first 56 minutes, and the last four minutes plus overtime, the wheels came off the car. We have uh, Jana Wimmer via videotape a little bit later on in the show. Keith Roding from Packer Report as well. And I know you guys are going to get into some really good discussions this evening. I'm sure we are. There's just a, there's In most games, there's two or three plays that you could say could really change the outcome of a game. This is one game that I think there's 20-plus plays that if this went this way, if this call went the other way, and there was just a – a whole debacle, a whole mess that went down on Sunday. Packers played so well for 55 minutes. They were up 19-7 to with 3.52 to go in the fourth, but then the Seahawks woke up from there. Russell Wilson throwing a touchdown and then converting the two-point try, and then it leads to this, the onside kick. This is one of those plays that you're referencing. What goes wrong here? This is the deal with Bostic jumping up, trying to get the ball. You know, a lot of people talk about if the ball came to me, I'd try and get in with Bostic. Coaches say if the ball goes above your head, you have to leave your feet. Don't. Don't go get the ball block. Let it go to the back line. Led to a touchdown by Marshawn Lynch, 24 yards. Mason Crosby, he was perfect kicking field goals, but it wasn't enough as we get into overtime here and then Tremont Williams getting beat. It is. This is just tough. With how well our defense played, like I said, for the first three and three quarters of the game to see the defense just fall apart at the end, the offense not be able to, you know, our, our we've talked all season long about our offensive line blocking well. Uh, Eddie Lacy running well. Starks coming for that burst in this game. In that end of the fourth quarter, we just had nothing. We couldn't couldn't get a first down to save our lives. A lot of the feedback after this game about the head coach Mike McCarthy obviously calling offensive plays. His playoff record now six and five. What does this do for his legacy, for Aaron Rodgers, for them to be that close and have it slip away? You know, it's definitely going to tarnish it a little. I mean, uh, it's a it's a huge loss in a huge game. Uh, but I think. McCarthy has a lot of years left in him. I think Rodgers has a lot of years left in him. And now I think it comes down to the organization, Ted Thompson and the back office people pulling that money together, keeping the players we have to keep and going out and getting the players we need to get to keep this team where it is and also to take it up to the next level. That's a conversation we will have next week. But in the meantime, a lot of disappointment within the organization. Jana Wimmer more on that. When Morgan Burnett had that interception in the fourth quarter, Seahawks fans were leaving the building. It's just amazing the turn of events after that. They were. I mean, we had Packer fans booking tickets, and I heard uh, Seahawks fans were watching the end of the fourth quarter in overtime from outside the, looking through the glass of the stadium, watching it on TV. We have a lot to dig into on in this edition of Green and Gold Gridiron. Keith Rorting will join us after the break, and we'll break down many of those plays that we we're talking about and see what this means for the Green Bay Packers and, and how it all just slipped away. Much more to come here on our show. Stick around, everybody. Welcome back to Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron. We're at Scotty's in Schofield. I'm Brian Groff, along with Bill Ferrario and a man who has not slept, has not shaved since <sighs> Sunday, Keith Rorting from PackerReport.com. I'm distraught, Brian. How distraught are you? I didn't shave. I haven't no, slept you didn't. good. <laughs> Fell asleep on the living room floor yeah. watching NFL Network lowlights, trying to write a story about where does this game rank among the worst losses in Packer history. And where does it rank for you? I'll tell you what. I didn't – you know, I think, I think you look at some of the games that people previously said were those worst losses ever. Fourth and 26 at Philadelphia, Super Bowl 32. You know, the loss at San Francisco with the Terrell Owens pass at the end. Oh, man, the 07 title game. This, this, one, this one is up there. I, I think it was a game that – it was there. We won, the game was won. The game was won. People, who knows, might have, might have booked a ticket in the third quarter, maybe if they thought they were going to be out there with, oh, I don't know, a television show covering it, <laughs> yeah. perhaps. So, yeah, yeah. So as Worst you were loss ever. ever. At home, a mopey house cat of my a sports writer. My wife called writer. me a mopey house cat of a sports writer. <laughs> yeah, and my <laughs> son is possibly a mopey third grader. Uh, he was very, also very distraught about the game. He didn't, he didn't want to come in the kitchen and eat bacon. Just no. covered him, covered That's up depressed. with a blanket. So with ESPN's probability, they had the Packers at halftime at a 94.4% chance of winning. 
went up it to It went to 96.1% oh. with 504 left in the fourth quarter. Bill, the Packers could not take advantage of turnovers. What did you see? Let's talk about the first half. What was wrong with what they were doing in the first half? You know, every time they got in the red zone, they were coming away with field goals. I mean, that's the, the bottom line right there. I mean, there were, there were times in the game where I was saying we should have been up by 24, by 30. So, you know, like, it just every time you're down there that close in that type of game, you're not playing, you know, a, a Tampa Bay or a bad team that year. You're, you're playing for the NFC Championship against one of the best teams in the NFL. You have to walk away with touchdowns. You can't. The majority of games you're not going to win walking away with field goals, and I think that was the start of the end right there, getting that many field goals throughout the game. You, you feel, though, and I mean, as I watched it, I thought, if they were going to go for it, you go for it that first time you're down there. You go for it when you're, you're four inches away, but once you make the decision not to do that, then I feel like, okay, that's, that's what we're doing here. We're taking our points. We're going to get our three. So after they went for three there, I guess I was okay going for three and ensuing times. I feel like if you're going to be aggressive, do it on that first time. You know, and I guess I go back and forth on that where I understand that first time down, they want to get points. I mean, a coach looks at it as we're going up against one of the best defenses in the NFL, and Take we've proven that when we're on, we're on, but when we're not on, we could be off. And to say let's get at least three points and walk away, I could under – is it the right decision, wrong decision? I don't know. Everybody's saying it's 50-50, and I don't know. At some point – as an offensive lineman, I'd want that ball. But at the same time, too, it's not like third down was third and nine where they gained eight yards and now it's fourth and one. It was third and short mm -hmm. to begin with, and they couldn't get the first down. Well, and they ruled so it a touchdown. They ruled it mm -hmm. a touchdown, they and they, they reviewed did. it and they they incorrectly they took it off. They did. They but had their shot on second and, and third down and to they, punch and it they in. Did, and, and they, they didn't do it. So looking at it from McCarthy's point of view, I know he's getting a lot of heat today and, and uh, last night, but, you know, it's easy to say hindsight's 2020 mm -hmm. and to say you should have went for it. I don't know. I think at that time, points on the board were important. As we saw throughout the game, points were very valuable coming down to the end of the game. Rodgers threw an interception, so Mike McCarthy said it was more important for him to get points so he would go for the field goal. If that doesn't happen, that obviously changes the course of the play calling. Right, and, and that second interception, again, they were in field goal range, so – you know, if they, again, if you're, I, I felt like if you didn't do it right away, you're getting field goals. And that strategy, that strategy of we are going to take field goals, we're going to get the points that are presented to us. I mean, didn't that seem like it worked up until about three minutes left in the game? I mean, for 56 minutes, that strategy it, it, seemed like it worked. It did, but I think if you, I think if we look back and said hypothetically, if we played the Seattle Seahawks, this t Seattle Seahawks team nine more times would kick in field goals all game. Would we think it would work? I, would, I wouldn't think it would have worked once. We got lucky and we were that close. I, I just think bottom line is you want to walk away with seven. Yeah. Wheels are you, good. You, love, you like it when guys are aggressive. Mike Daniels was overly aggressive on one of those turnovers. What did you think of that, him going down and taunting a guy in the sideline? Because you know, that, that knocked him back. Yeah. They're and coming I, back I think to And you don't know how that changed the play call. Yeah. There's, there's a big difference, I think, with – the, the Lang hit that I think both me and you liked, that yep. aggressiveness. It was a tone setter. It, exactly. Where this, I think he knew there was a line, and he knew he jumped 10 feet past the line. It wasn't just going over the line a little bit. The way they look at taunting nowadays and, and unsportsmanlike, it's a lot different than it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, he could have done that, talked about the guy's mom, called the, called the guy's girlfriend and do a little, you know, done the whole spiel and nobody would have batted an eye about it now you look at a guy the wrong way after the play you're going to get a flag you have to know that you have to know what time of the game it is and well and it, it, it just it seems bad. so pointless he it ran is. down there he leaned down to a guy on the ground he got in his face obviously dropped a few expletives because that's what got yeah. that flag out so fast there was no point to it it wasn't like the lane thing yeah. you come you, you kind of keep your no guy way clean he didn't you think something bad was going to happen Absolutely. when you do that you know from the second you're starting to do that, that you're going to get a flag. It's, it's a the, loss of poise, things. and it's an early spot in the game for that to happen. Now, I talked to Bill about this. Keith, I'll open it up for you now. Morgan Burnett gets the interception <sighs> and does the, not decide to get any sort of return on it. What's your take on that? Julius Peppers looked like he wanted him to get down. It sounds like coaches would want him to get down. They had other returns where there were penalties. Clay Matthews had a penalty on a return as well. What are your thoughts on that? Bill and I talked about this before the show and in the bathroom of all places. And I said, we need, we need to save some of this. We, we don't agree on it. I, I, I went back, again, I've watched 
between the NFL Network, ESPN, and DVRing the game, I, I've clearly, you know, I'm a, I'm a masochist. This is not cathartic for me. I've watched way too much of this already. I, I, I need to get some sleep. I need to stop drinking coffee, Brian. But, I mean, for, for me, of all the plays, I mean, the Bostic play, there's as bad as that play was, as glaring as it was, there's something instinctive about a guy who makes his money, who makes his living catching the ball. Here comes the ball. I'm going to catch it. And, and, and we'll see, get to Bostic's, that. But, but to compare those two, Bostic's rule is – you don't touch the ball if you have to leave the ground. So he did opposite what the coaches coach. Right, right. Burnett Here's did what coaches coach him to yeah, do. But but did they coach it in that? If, I guarantee if the you coaches, if that was the call with five minutes left on the clock, with Seattle having those timeouts, then then you do have to shift blame to the coaches. That was awful. The, out of out of all the plays, out of the the six or eight plays that you can go back and look look at the the onside kick, Burnett. Um, the the two point conversion that one stands out because the game wasn't over because he got the interception he had twenty yards of green he had twenty yards of green in front of him over. Pe I think they Peppers want him to go down because you him. want the ball in the offensive hands you don't how many times are there penalties turnovers there's a lot of things that could, guys are on defense for a reason you, you they remember can't that Al Harris pick six against that's one play but how, how many do you don't, remember don't the guys MD normally Jennings? try to get out of bounds though. Rather than just give there was him. no one, there was down, no one around just, him. Just there was go no down. One, if your coach should get the ball around him, I get it. If That's what your coach to do. I mean, we could get mad at the coaches, but I think, like he said, he would do it again. Peppers has been in the league how long? Said go down. I think everybody that's played football says in that spot you go down, give it to the MVP of the league, put it in his hands with Eddie Lacy. That's who we thought could have sealed the game. One I don't want a defensive one, I know, one offensive back. lineman. 20 yards in front of him, the Peppers could have peeled back and got. And then it's just beating Russell Wilson to the end zone. That's what ices the game. That's what seals you the know, victory. All he had to do but, was all he had to do was run 20 yards with no one touching if, him and go out of bounds and field goal butts, We'd all have a happy <laughs> Christmas too. You know, we could always say if this happened, they're on defense for a reason. They're supposed to go down. I don't want a defensive guy holding the ball. The Packers in the past, that was our issue in the past couple of years. Guys trying to pad stats with interceptions, running back for touchdowns. I'm happy he went down. That's MD Jennings it, a couple years ago. I would have been happy with two minutes down, left and they kneel down. But what about MD Jennings intercepting totally the ball? Totally different. Totally different. Totally different. It's, you're supposed to do something. You're coached to do something. MD Jennings should have batted it down. Game would have been over. Burnett, you're supposed to go to the ground. Game wasn't I over. I firmly believe Game wasn't over. he's supposed to go to the ground in that spot. Put it in an offensive player's hand. All, All right, right we're going to wrap more. up this one. We're going to move into our title town topics. And obviously, we got into play calling just a little bit here. We're going to open it up even more and talking defense. Let's go a little bit more back on the offense. Now, topic one as talking about these turnovers and then obviously what they could not do with the football after that. Which calls do you most disagree with? I know there's going to be a lot out there, but give me one or two. Offensive calls? Offensive calls that you didn't like. You know, I, I'm not one to judge the play calling. Like I said, it's easy to say today you should have done it the other way and it would have went different. I'm upset with the offensive line not – blocking better in short yardage situations. Uh, I'm upset at the end of the game. I mean, that's a four-minute offense. The ball's put in the offensive player's hands to run the clock out and end the game, and we couldn't do it, and we had more than one opportunity to do it. Uh, I think the biggest call in the game, and it's not an offensive call, I go back to the, the, uh, the late hit where the official threw the personal foul, but they didn't on – when Russell Wilson got sacked, we got a, said, the right. late hit penalty. Russell Wilson, it should have been tacked on another 15 yards because it was a personal foul, a dead ball personal foul. They never tacked on to 15 yards. It should have been but second and 46, I think. But they ruled it, it as part of the play, so they declined the penalty, correct? I don't that believe play. so. I, everything they I've heard today they didn't has been. tack it on on the end. I, I, I will jump in there. Okay, so it was, but it was second and 31. In, in, in the play, I thought you were going to say that I'll jump in on is, so it went from second and 31 to third and 19. They decide they're going to rush two. Dayton Jones, while he was up there, was really spying Wilson. You drop eight to cover four and, and somehow give, it, give up that play. I mean, that was, that was huge. That was huge. There was another play on the, uh, on the final drive, Casey Hayward just absolutely loses his guy. And then the, the final touchdown to curse, Tremont Williams. I mean, it looked like they were in a cover zero. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, and he they've still showed that a lot this year. Yeah. Seattle knew that. Seattle right. had that scouted. Absolutely. And then, you know, I mean. Or even the two-point conversion. I mean, mm -hmm. what, it, it seemed like our defense was lost. On the two-point conversion, it, it, that play took forever. The ball was in the air forever. And Clinton Dix was at, the ball uh, again the in, in, the, I mean, in the area. I, I don't know. You know, everyone's like, oh, it didn't look like he made a play on it. 
I don't know. I mean, he was there. He's got this this big guy in Luke Wilson in front of him. But man, I don't know. I, it, it's hard to get on Clinton Dix after after the game he had. Well, we can't just say two, this is all two, he had to two do. All he had to do was bat the ball down, and we would have won all the game. All he had to he, do. All he had to do was bat the two point conversion down. Look for and Ario. We would have won the game. It's that easy. Come on. Before now. we it's regress, we're going to take a, a break, and we're going to get into topics two and three with Bill Ferrario and Keith Rodick right. after this. We are working our way through Title Town Topics. Brian Gropp, Bill Ferrario, and Keith Rordink. And we just got started on the other side of that break. Topic number two in week number one, Aaron Rodgers never threw in the direction of Richard Sherman. This time around, he gets a pick, but later on sprains his left elbow. Packers didn't really go after him. He did make a tackle on Jordy Nelson at the end of their last offensive series. One part of this is who was aware of the injury and do you think they should have went after him when he got hurt? Supposedly, nobody was aware of the injury, is, is what they're saying. It's, Which I it's, think is a lot. I do not it, know. I, I mean, so he's walking around like a, like a puppy that got his paw stepped on, holding it up like this. Now, I will also say Sherman's a smart competitor, and there may have been a little bit of gamesmanship of, oh, I'm, I'm so hurt, I sure hope they don't yeah. throw to me, and next thing you know, he's picking it off. You know, Aaron Rodgers said that he's still a great player with one arm, but – I mean, you you got to test him a little. I mean, they barely went after him. They had the interception. They had the pass to Nelson late, and they threw to Devontae Adams earlier on a penalty, which really didn't even count. So, I mean, they threw at him three times, two plays that counted, one was a pick. I don't know. I mean, you know, he's one of the best cornerbacks in the game, but if, 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 you're, if you're ever going to go after him, that that's the time. So, to, to say they didn't notice, I don't know, open your eyes. They 100% knew. They have people – in the booth watching TVs specifically for instances like that. So to say they didn't know, I mean, it's fine with them saying it, but we all know they knew. Roger says he knew. Uh, prior to the injury, do you throw at him just for the sake of throwing? Absolutely not. I think that's a bunch of garbage. Right. You throw you up guys are open. It, it, yeah, it's a game plan. You don't throw at a guy just to say, I'm going to attack him because he's the bastard because I didn't do it last time. Once he's injured, like Keith said, yeah, I would have liked to have seen him do it, but it, honestly, at, at that point in the game, nothing we were doing was working. You know, I would have liked to have seen us run the ball and gain five yards a pop, which our offense should be able to do, has done all year, but nothing was working. So to say to put the ball up even to an injured cornerback who's that good normally, I don't know. It's a tough call. Yeah. Topic number three, special teams had issues all season. We saw it again in this game, Seattle scoring on a fake field goal. We're going to break that down in the Bills breakdown in a little bit, but then Seattle recovering an onside kick. What changes do you think need to be made on special teams for the Packers as we go into this offseason? I, I think Sean Slocum is gone. Um, I think he was gone before the, the latest debacles. Um, I think when you have seven block kicks and when it's seven different circumstances and seven different guys and seven different ways that plays are breaking down, how can it not be the coaching? You know, on top of that, their their kick returns are, are certainly nothing to get excited about. I think it's time to make a change. You can't change everybody on those units. You know, I understood when Lang and Sitton were out early and they had some protection problems inside. But, again, it's it, it's been too many different things. You can't make excuses. It's something the Seahawks scouted. And, you know, he's, he's got to go. And cer certainly what happened Sunday was ridiculous. I agree. The the kicks come down to you, – you have offensive linemen and tight ends – blocking on PAT and field goals and have that many. Once you get a block, the next three teams you play are going to challenge. It's blood in the water. If, yeah, yeah, they're going to see if they can do it. And until you shore it up, they're not going to stop bringing it over that side. And we have good guys blocking. So like he said, it's not the, it's not the people blocking. It's you have to be able to correct it. You have to coach it until they correct it. And for it to happen seven times, that's too many. And then for all of it to lead up to this peak here where the, the fake field goal and just – uh, the onside kick, the way everything went down at the end at a crucial time doesn't look good for him. So you think Slocum's gone? Any other coach? I do. Uh, I think just Slocum. I, I, I think the criticism, you know, obviously McCarthy's fine. I think the, the yeah. criticism of Capers is ridiculous. And I think I, he proved it this year that all that criticism is for not. I mean, he brought right. that defense together. Look, look at the turnaround they had yeah. in the second half of the season. And, again, it just, it just makes the end of that game – all the more heartbreaking. It was it was so sudden and so stunning. It was defeat pulled from the jaws of victory. It, you know, and again, just you know, I think it's uh, you know it's the old uh, you know Jim's and Joe's 
not X's and O's. I mean, guys need to make plays. Guys need to do what they've been coached to do. And when they fail to do that, that's not on the coach. Next week, we're really going to get into the offseason decisions with the free agents that are coming up, and we'll talk more about those players who we think may not be in a Packers uniform next year. That does it for our Titletown topics for this week. We will take a break, and then we'll do Bill's breakdown, and it'll be that fake field goal that went for a touchdown. It's time now for Bill's breakdown, and for this one, the Packers, once again, going back to when they were in control, 16 to nothing in the third quarter. The Seahawks needed to get points, and they did on a fake field goal. Bill, what went wrong for the Packers on this play? I think the biggest thing went wrong was they were not expecting a fake field goal. On any special teams play like this, you got to be – you, you the, the, the front defensive linemen, they're coming, they're coming trying to block the kick. Everybody else, they have zones, they have men. A.J. Hawk shifts over here into the flat, and the thing that I get from, and I don't know, is his responsibility the, the guy with the ball, John Ryan, or is it the safety that comes across that we'll see on the, on the next clip? The thing that upsets me, and I can tell this from kids at a youth age to the NFL, is if you're going to make a mistake, but if you're going to make a mistake, make a mistake at 100%, and he's just... He in air, know. not am sure I, what I, to am do. Am I going? Am I dropping? Exactly. Am I, I don't care what you're supposed to do. This. Just do it 100%. If you make the decision to go after him, go after him and hit him as hard as you can if you're supposed to drop, drop, but make a decision. I'm not sure whose responsibility, who is responsible for who. There should have been a guy with each guy. There was nobody on the left side, so mm-hmm. why we even have a safety over there, I don't know why, but clearly it was messed up. Another deal talking about special teams coach with Slocum that just – it's a mess. Just a whole, you know, we talk about peaking at the right time, and we peaked all the way up to last week's game. And this week, like I said before, the wheels came off and everything just fell apart. I, 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 think, we, I think we peaked for 56 minutes, too. We, I mean, there, we, we did, did yeah. enough. Again, that's, ugh. I, I, I do, I do want to point out, this is, this is the first time we didn't, we didn't laugh at you dropping the ball in your break. I don't have it in me. I agree. I can't. It's, it's, yeah, I can't not a laugh in week I, I this can't, week. It's not a laugh. And that will do it for our Bills breakdown. Real quickly, on the Super Bowl, Seahawks and Patriots, six former Badgers on rosters. It's exciting. You know, it's good for the university. Uh, great to be a Badger alumni going into the Super Bowl knowing that and wishing all those guys the best. And one way or another, there's going to be a couple Badgers with the Super Bowl ring this year. It's the most England's. represented university. Ah, it's the, exciting. Of, of it either is. team. This is in New Bowl. England. Says a lot for those high school kids. Go to the University of Wisconsin. You'll be yeah, playing in the Super Bowl someday. Patriots headed to the Super Bowl for the sixth time. We are not going to do our pick for the Super Bowl this week. We're going to save that for next week. But we can show you the standings. We were all... We all had the same picks last yep. week. William went with the Colts, so you can take a look at the updated standings, and there was one I just to go, Super Bowl 49. I just appreciate the guests there, so it that's, looks, that's looks nice. a little bit better, even You're though tied, I'm tied with the guests. But you were tied, tied with the tied guests. goes to you, Bill. Players play. Players don't pick. I you know, don't, now don't know I'm going to have to pick against you in the Super Bowl unless you pick a team that I, I am morally opposed to rooting for. <laughs> what I think we're probably going to do is all pick at the same time. I don't even know what we win. How does it what do we win? We have no idea what we're even playing for, but we've been we doing it all season long. We, we have for? two more shows to go next week. We will talk about the Packers and their off season and some of the decisions that they're going to be facing, and we will talk with former Packers and Badgers quarterback Randy Wright. So we'll get a Badger on the show. And Bill Abadger. Abadger. I have more and stuff to complain Packer. about. We, oh, we you have need, a lot more to talk to go, about. We'll we see if Keith can shave by then. That will do it for this edition of Green and Gold Gridiron. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you for watching Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron.